coffee, the universal beverage originating in the old world, has achieved its greatest development in the new. It is grown in most of the countries of Central and South America, and Brazil is the greatest producer. The principal coffee-growing states are Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, Rio de Janeiro, and Paraná. Let us start on a visit to a Brazilian coffee fazenda, and there observe the process that must be followed in bringing coffee from plantation to consumer. We enter at the great coffee port of Santos. Then proceed inland by rail to the progressive city of Sao Paulo. And continue our journey westward to Brazil's great coffee growing area, the central mountain plateau. Here huge estates containing millions of trees are devoted to fig growing. For when a new plantation is developed, the area selected first must be cleared of trees and underbrush. Plantation workers cut the underbrush down and the trees and brush are permitted to dry and the area is finally cleared by burning. Brazilian coffee grows best in the reddish clay soil known as terra rocha. Brazilian coffee is grown from seed planted in large shaded nurseries. The seeds for planting are chosen from specially selected coffee trees seven or eight years old. These seeds are planted in beds about three inches apart and two inches deep. The seeds germinate in about eight weeks. When the plants reach a height of eight inches, they are transplanted to a new bed. At six months, they are again transplanted into loose baskets. And at 18 months, the plants are ready for permanent planting. Coffee plantations are usually laid out with trees planted 10 feet apart in each direction, resulting in approximately 450 trees to the acre. The 18 months old tree, basket included, is planted in a hole about two feet deep. After the hole has been filled, a ditch is dug around the new coffee tree to retain the water needed by the young plant. After several months, the new coffee tree has become rugged and strong. After three years, a few berries may appear, but full production is not achieved until the fifth or sixth year. The leaves of the trees are always green, slightly waxy, and from four to five inches long. As the plantation develops, Cleaning up around the trees is essential, for many enemy plants tend to choke out the coffee if it is not properly weeded. In time also, fertilizer must be added to replenish the supply of food the coffee tree exacts from the soil. Coffee trees blossom during August, September, and October. The white flowers cling closely to the stems of the trees, turning the plantation into a sea of white. And here is a fully developed coffee tree, ready to yield its product. The berries of a coffee tree are first green, then yellow, then red, somewhat resembling ripe cherries. In stripping a tree of its berries, a piece of canvas is placed on the ground to catch the berries as they fall. Quite often, leaves and branches drop in with the berries on the canvas. Most of these are picked off by hand.
balance are eliminated by a quick toss, and the picker has only the clean berries left in her sieve. During the day, hundreds of these bags are filled with coffee berries. Good coffee pickers can average two to 500 pounds of coffee a day, each tree bearing approximately two pounds of coffee annually. A coffee tree produces full crops up to its 15th or 20th year. Wagons loaded with bags of freshly picked coffee arrive at the large storage tanks near the plantation headquarters, where they pause to allow the workers to unload their burden of brownish red berries. Bag after bag is dumped into a huge tank, which is slowly filled with water. When the tank is full, the berries are floated to the nearby washing tanks by means of an intricate system of small canals. Upon entering these large washing tanks, coffee berries are agitated. This agitation prevents the berries from being affected by the hot if exposed for any length of time. After the berries have been allowed to soak for a sufficient period, they are sluiced to the rotary washer where they undergo a vigorous washing process. This process removes grit and other foreign substances from the outer cover of the coffee bean. Then the coffee berries are sluiced to waiting buckets. It is now ready for drying. Washed berries are set out to dry on a large concrete platform called the terreo. This is also a long process requiring about three weeks of dry weather. During this period, the coffee berries must be turned at regular intervals to avoid too long an exposure to the heat of the sun. During this sun drying period, great care is taken to protect the coffee berries from dampness and possible rain. They are raked into piles at the end of each day and covered with a canvas tarpaulin. Each morning, they are again spread out in the sun and turned over periodically by the workers. Once this drying process has been completed, the coffee bean is ready to be separated from its outer protective covering. Most plantations in Brazil maintain their own hulling and processing plants. This machine is designed for hulling the coffee berry, being especially used to remove the outer coverings which have been around the bean up to this time. 
After the coffee bean bowl, they are graded by size in this automatic sizing machine. The shaking action causes the different sized beans magically to find their proper compartment. Even in this day of modern machinery, a further inspection of the coffee by keen-eyed girls is made. Then each bag is weighed and sent to the plantation warehouse for storage until ordered for shipment to Santos. On receipt of shipping orders, the coffee is loaded into trucks for transportation to nearby railroads, where it is dispatched to Santos coffee shipping port of Brazil. En route to Santos, we visit Sao Paulo, the coffee capital of the world. Coffee and Sao Paulo are almost synonymous terms, while the growth of the city is due largely to the expansion of the coffee industry. Modern skyscrapers dot the horizon of this metropolis of South America. The Municipal Opera House is one of the most magnificent buildings of Sao Paulo. The famous Iparanga Museum, once the home of the Emperors of Brazil. A city of many beautiful tropical parks. Home of the Sao Paulo Coffee Institute. And the huge warehouses of the National Coffee Department. Santos, the greatest coffee shipping port of the world through which pass more than one and one half billion pounds of coffee every year. Three miles of modern concrete docks, with space for 50 ocean liners to carry the coffee of Brazil to all ports of the world. The Santos Coffee Exchange is the heart of the business life of the greatest coffee exporting city in the world. Its busy streets crowded with coffee brokers who sell their coffee on the street or in the offices of the many exporters. At the exporter's office, samples are received and labeled, then carried to the grading department, where experts examine the green coffee, first by its fragrance, then by its appearance, and also by the number of imperfections found in the sample. Pouring the color sieves is the method used for determining the various size beans. Small lots of the coffee are then roasted, and each sample is tasted to determine its flavor characteristics exactly. On reaching Santos from the interior, the coffee is taken to the huge warehouses on the docks and put into new bags especially designed for export purposes. Truckload after truckload of coffee finds its way through the busy streets to the docks and waiting ships. The United 
United States is the largest consumer of Brazilian coffee. But great quantities are also shipped to Europe and other parts of the world. The signal for departure given, the ship leaves port. At sea, special care is taken to ventilate the holes where the bags of coffee are stored. The temperature always averages 80 degrees. On arrival in New York, no time is lost in unloading the cargo of coffee after the government permit to land and deliver is in the hands of a customs inspector on the dock. As the bags come up out of the hole, the foreman directs the laborers to place them on the dock section chopped off for each consignment. The coffee again is sampled on arrival in New York. The importer takes samples of several bags of the new shipment. The new shipment of coffee is transferred to the roasting plant, where automatic machinery lifts the bags to the large storage room. Before roasting, coffees of different types are blended to produce exactly the flavor desired. Different brands, of course, use different blends. Automatic machinery mixes the coffees together thoroughly. Now the coffee is released to the roasting cylinders, where in this most modern of coffee plants, the time and degree of roast is automatically controlled to ensure absolute uniformity. Properly roasted, the coffee is discharged into cooling pans, where the coffee is constantly stirred, allowing it to cool before releasing it to be packaged. By means of automatic weighing, packaging, and sealing machinery, so that all its freshness is retained to be delivered to the consumer. Thousands upon thousands of bags of coffee are packaged and shipped from this roasting plant to meet the demand for by millions of people every day. Coffee is one of the principal products of the Americas, a delightful beverage enjoyed by millions the world over. Coffee, truly a gift of the Americas to the world. This educational picture is presented by the Pan American Union, the international organization of the 21 American republics. For additional films or information regarding the republics of the American continent, write to the Pan American Union, Washington, D.C.